Hi guys and welcome to another 7 minute lecture. We are delving into fiction once again guys. This time focusing on an individual work of fiction rather than profiling a writer per se. I am a huge fan of comic books and over the decades this medium has produced stuff which I would certainly put on a short list of the best fiction that I've read. And nothing is more monumental in this regard than Alan Moore's Watchmen, a comic book series written during 1986 and 1987. I've seen the movie and I'm not a big fan of it, so this lecture is about the original Alan Moore graphic novel slash comic book series. I've not seen any of the subsequent television adaptations either, so I don't even know what those are like. As far as the source material goes though, it is a true masterclass in taking a genre, in this case superhero fiction, identifying all the major themes in that genre and then writing a story that on the surface works as a great example of that genre but under the surface also works as a great critique of it. So, why do I praise it so much? Let's break it down and look at the ways in which so many tropes have been dismantled here. Firstly, it represents one of the first and in my opinion still the best deconstructions of what a superhero society would actually be like and the problems that would arise from having such a complex social order. The comic book genre has become a lot more sophisticated these days and there are far deeper political themes and social themes going on. But this was the pioneer of all that. Back then in the 80s, the typical conceptualization of a comic book hero was some benevolent man or woman who would save the world, right? The typical DC Comics or Marvel Comics uh, lineups. Watchmen showed us how messed up these people should actually be deep down inside for them to be driven to be superheroes. It might be obvious to us now with all these Christopher Nolan Batman films and this entire subgenre of superhero fiction that even adults can enjoy. But back then, this was groundbreaking. This idea of showing us that for someone to actually put on a costume and fight crime, would they be normal people? Really? Would they be well-balanced, well-adjusted individuals? Or would something be a bit off with most of them? This series explores that a lot. Two of the most interesting superheroes among the Watchmen, Rorschach and the Comedian, are straight up madmen in their own way. One believes in ideals and the other doesn't, but they are both the type who would be considered dangerous and unstable. The series questions the idea of whether these superheroes would actually care about us as well if they were so powerful. So the whole Superman stereotype is that uh, he is this godlike figure who somehow cares for human beings and wants to save them from these crises that keep popping up. Here's that entire thing subverted where the Superman-like character simply has no interest as it sort of turns out in the real world. He is so much more powerful than us that all our wars and conflicts just seem like petty squabbles to him and he has no humanity left in him because of this superiority. Another trope commonly seen in superhero fiction at that time was this blind way in which society generally tends to accept the superheroes and treat them like celebrities in these stories. Of course, you could argue that Marvel Comics sort of had uh, uh, X-Men, right? But if you look at the general Superman or Fantastic Four type premise, societies in these stories accept and idolize these caped crusaders. But that wouldn't be the case if it really happened, right? Which is captured really well in Watchmen, where there's this deep-rooted paranoia from the people themselves. Who watches the Watchmen? This uh, sort of sense of fear from the masses. And there's also a, a stream of opportunistic uh, sort of uh, government agents and bureaucrats who constantly try to exploit this fear as well. The story also does a great job looking at what the geopolitics of superheroes would be. Something which blew my mind when I first read it. Because if you read many of the, let's say, the early uh, Superman and Avengers stories, for instance, 
the government is always asking these guys to save the world from some incoming asteroid or an alien invasion or some megalomaniacal supervillain. But if superheroes really existed in the real world, what would the governments actually do with them? They would hire them to fight in their own wars and use them to spread geopolitical influence, which is what they do here. So in the Watchmen story, the Americans have won the Vietnam War because they had superheroes on their side. And that's what superheroes would actually be used for if they existed. When we think about it, it wouldn't be Superman catching someone falling off a building on fire. Superman would probably be defending our country by killing people in some far off land. And finally, the story also asks a very key question about morality. I don't want to give away spoilers to people who haven't read the series. All I'll say is that the final plot is about whether it's okay to kill hundreds of thousands in order to save hundreds of millions. As in the central question of the climax in this story is not some big battle where an army of superheroes all get together to beat up one guy with a gauntlet. It's about none of that. It's rather about whether a large number of people can be slaughtered in order to save an even larger number of people. Can it ever be moral to do that? I can keep going on because sort of uh, I, I, I enjoy this work a lot, but I do want to finish on time. I haven't been able to touch on some of the political themes like surveillance and culture. Since this was written in the 90s, there's this usual anti-conservative posture that artists took at the time, which Alan Moore has here as well. The 80s was a decade where conservatism was very popular in the West with Ronald Reagan on one side and Margaret Thatcher on the other. So there's a lot of anti-Thatcherite themes in the series as well. And that's one of the reasons the movie adaptations failed in my opinion because they didn't really understand the mood and the vibe of the original story. They just tried to create a 21st century superhero movie that would appeal to a movie going modern audience. But the original story was meant to be a symbol of the Cold War and the politics and paranoia surrounding that. Overall guys, I would say, please do yourself a favor and read Watchmen. It's in a simple comic book format and anybody can enjoy it. If you like superhero fiction, you will love it. If you don't like superhero fiction, you will love it as well. And speaking of loving, if you like content like this, please don't forget to share and subscribe. Thank you, take care and I'll see you soon.